live from Anaheim, California, it's theCUBE, covering Nutanix.next 2019. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Nutanix.next. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, John Furrier. We are joined by two guests for this segment. We have Julie O'Brien. She is the Senior Vice President of Corporate Marketing. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Julie. Thank you. And we have Michelle Taylor-Smith, the Senior Director of Corporate Social Responsibility here at Nutanix. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, thanks for having us. So, over 6,500 attendees, there were 20,000 people who were live streaming the keynote. You have a huge audience. Congratulations on, the, on the show. What are you hoping attendees come away with and customers and partners who are here? What, are you, what is sort of the big message that you want people to come away with? Yeah, so I mean this year for us, it's our 10th anniversary as a company and we are so um, humbled and honored to have all of these customers and partners on the journey with us. So a big part of a show is just to say thank you for being an early builder, believer, and dreamer with us, and the best is yet to come. So lots of innovation happening in, in HCI, and, uh, and really trying to show people how we can be the right partner for them as they're moving to the hybrid cloud. D. Rogers earlier talking about his, his journey as well. And it's interesting, just a few years ago, you were still raising money, you weren't even public. Yeah. Now you're public, yeah. 10 years old. But there's still the entrepreneurial energy. Yes. You know, he calls it the yes. billion dollar startup. Yeah. Um, and there's now competition. Yes. So game is on. Everyone's yes. seeing the success, it's out there. It's not like hidden in, in, in plain sight like it was just, when it, just a few years ago. You yeah. guys have doing great, congratulations. Thank you. But now you have competition, you got loyal customers. Mm -hmm. What's next? What's the, what's the big strategy and how you guys build on that momentum? What are you guys thinking about? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I would say, you know, as we look at the customer journey, right, the st step one is really about modernizing your data center. That is our sweet spot, that's where Nutanix started as a company, HCI, right? Step two is really about how do we help customers take all that goodness that they see with the public cloud and bring that into their own private cloud. We call that an enterprise cloud. And then really the next step of the journey, but a customer may already be there today, is um, how do I bridge multiple clouds, right? And multiple clouds to customers could be, it could be the edge, which might be an IOT um, application, it could be a remote office branch office. So what that cloud strategy looks like for people could be very different depending what vertical they're in, what industry they're in. So I would say what to watch for us and what's next is we're all headed with this next generation of many clouds, not yeah. just one. And you guys have a monster net promoter score, which is a score that measures loyalty, and if your customers would promote it to their peers, yes. it's like 90, it's like a monster score. Yeah, it's been over 90 on average for the last five years now, which is no easy feat. And uh, you know, we tell customers all the time, keep us hungry, keep us honest, right? Tell us how we're doing, and we want to keep that score high too, because that's a great reflection of yeah. Um, you know, how they're valuing the relationship, not just the product, but what happens after you buy the product. So yeah, and we know as we evolve the portfolio going from just HCI to multiple products, that will get harder. So we've got to start to figure out how do we bring in some AI, some uh, maybe machine learning so that when you call in and you might be a Flow customer and Rebecca might be an HCI customer, we know how to route you to the right person the right time, which is, really nice, as you know, when you call support, you want to get somebody right there who's not saying, hold on, let me pass you to Michelle, and Michelle's saying, hold on, let me pass you to John, yeah. right? You want an expert that's going to carry you all the way through, and hopefully you heard some great stories this morning, uh, some of our early customers who've shared that, um, what it's meant for them. So delighting customers is is obviously your top priority, but but Nutanix is doing a lot of other kind of good, good in the world. Yeah. I want to bring you into the conversation a little, Michelle. Tell us about the Heart Initiative. Uh, absolutely, um, so I've been with Nutanix for a little over six and a half years now, and um, the spirit of giving and caring um, has been with the company. I actually used to run channel marketing, um, but it's been with that the, the whole time that I've been there. But about three years ago, Julie actually um, asked if I wanted to start Dot .heart, or actually start our CSR program, which became Dot .heart. And um, it's an amazing way of giving back. In fact, last year it got incorporated officially into our values of hungry, humble, and honest, done with heart. And so it, it absolutely is part, it's just intrinsic in the company. Um, so what we do is uh, we're 
very conscious and aware of uh, diversity. And um, so we, we put a lot of effort towards helping women and um, underrepresented groups pursue their love of technology. Mm -hmm. And this is also sort of a, maybe a sub-theme of the show is, is, is that inclusion and that element yeah. to it. So talk about some of the sessions that you're having, particularly to help bring up women in tech and also underrepresented mm -hmm. under minorities. Absolutely. Do you, you want to? Well, why don't you talk about the, what we're doing in the booth, and right. I can talk about the women's lunch. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so one of the things we are doing, um, so women uh, and underrepresented groups, and actually people just starting their careers, don't have the same network that people with established careers have. And so what we've we are doing in our booth this time is we're collecting career advice. And so in effect, what we're doing is we're bringing the advice to people because they don't necessarily have the same networks to to go out and ask. Um, and for every piece of advice that we get, we're going to donate five dollars to an organization called Ignite, which helps uh, high school girls become aware of and pursue um, uh, careers in STEM. Mm -hmm. So and it's, it's been great so far. Um, I love when people come up there and they're, you know, what are you doing? And all of a sudden you start telling them, they're like, oh, well they should do this. And I'm like, write it down. And so we're actually, we have a, a wall. Uh, people write down their advice and we put it up on the wall. And then after the event, we're going to collect it and start putting it into a blog. And then we also have a, um, a Twitter program that we're doing or a Twitter initiative that we're doing right now that once a week we send out some of the advice and get people to chime in and add more advice. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then every um, dot next for the past few, we've been doing a uh, women in tech lunch. And so I know one of your guest speakers later today is going to be Dr. Ayana Harward uh, from Georgia Tech on robotics. So she's actually going to be sharing some of her thoughts on uh, mentorship mm -hmm. at the women's lunch. We also have a longtime Nutanix friend and advisor, Harvard Business School professor Deepak Maholtra, who uh, is very much focused on the art of negotiation to solve conflicts. And he's going to be talking about how to do things like how do you negotiate a salary increase? Some of those sweaty palm conversations that you need to have as you're moving through your career. So those are two of our speakers. And then we also have two sponsors that are also right. going to be spending some time too from so Veritas. Veritas and WWT. And WWT. And so so I want to I want to put you two both on the spot. You are both women in technology, and we know about from the unfortunate headlines about just the bro culture uh, that exists in technology, and 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 we also know about the dearth of women leaders in this industry, and this industry that is shaping our social, political, economic lives in in such important ways today. So what are what is some career advice that you're going to put up there on the board? <laughs> How would you what would what would you say to a young woman who is entering this field? Oh, I, I have got so much to say on this. <laughs> How much time do we have? Um, I think one thing that I've learned along the way is sometimes, you know, women tend to be very heads down. If I do a great job, someone will notice and I will move forward. And, and sometimes we're not comfortable with popping our heads up and, and helping to market a little bit about what we have done and making sure that people see the goodness, right? And that might not feel right or it might feel like you're overly marketing yourself, but I think um, being uh, able to articulate what you want and why you deserve it uh, is so important and don't view it as tooting your own horn. View it as an opportunity to share how you're contributing and, and where you want to see that path forward and just don't be afraid to ask what, sh what you want, what your ultimate goals are. Um, mine falls into um, a principle of Nutanix, which is get comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And um, and basically, if if you get an opportunity, go for it. Um, and I'll be very candid. When Julie offered me this role, and she said, "Do you want to do CSR?" I thought it meant customer service rep, and I'm like, mm -mm, "I don't want to do it at all." And uh, she and then she said, "Oh no, it's it's social responsibility." And I still thought it, I had no idea what it was. And the fact that you know, um, Julie and team were willing to take a chance on me doing it, but the fact of just going absolutely out of my comfort zone, learning something new, trying something new, um, and just, just going for it was great. And I would tell people to do that all the time. And it'll just, it, it, it'll teach you so much more, even about the roles that you know about, mm -hmm. just going and doing something different will teach you so much more about yourself and, and about other roles, so. That's great advice. Yeah. We also hear about mentoring and paying it forward. Yes. What do you guys do there? Because a lot of younger generations coming into the workforce who don't have the scar tissue or experience, mm -hmm. the networks are now starting to establish. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity. 
It is a big opportunity. So Wendy Pfeiffer, who's our CIO, sits on the board of Girls in Tech. So we're very involved there. Um, she is so warm and so uh, open about helping to get pass on what she's learned along the way too. I think anyone that you run into at Nutanix is very uh, honored and, and humbled to be approached as a mentor. Um, there are a number of women that I mentor inside of Nutanix as well as outside of Nutanix. And I think it's so important to help people understand what you've learned, uh, whether good or bad along the way, right? Because just like we're learning here at Dot .next, uh, with peer conversations, what have you done, what have you tried? Um, you need that in, in your progression in your career too. I don't know if there's anything that you'd... No, I, I would, two things I would add is, one is nobody got to where they are in their career without somebody helping them along the way. And so there's a big discussion now, which is actually what Dr. Howard is going to talk about, is, that goes beyond mentorship to sponsorship. And so how do you, how do you actually help push people forward mm -hmm. um, and, and help them in their careers? Uh, and then the other thing too is, I was listening to something the other day, it was a really interesting conversation, that before um, there were ways that people could oppress other people in, in society, and what they're saying now today, people are, are is helping to oppress different groups, is the fact of who you help. And so when you think about who you can help, think about outside of your friend's kids or you know, someone, who else can you help there that wouldn't normally have access to somebody like you or somebody like you know, in your circle or whatever. And, and that's hugely helpful. Um, and without just helping the same group continue to progress yeah. generation after generation. Paying it forward to different right. circles. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And expanding the network exactly. effects. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So this is a hugely competitive industry and I know that Nutanix cannot hire sales and marketing people fast enough to... What to are you <laughs> doing after this? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you though, how do you market Nutanix to prospective applicants? What is yeah. it, I mean you just talked about the ability to reinvent yourself as an employee, which is something that so many people are looking for in a yeah. long career, doing different things, being in different fields and, and, and really getting to experience other things, but what are the other, what's sort of the unique selling points for, for Nutanix that, that you try yeah. to bring on new people? Yeah, with? so the culture I think is, is so differentiating overall. So Michelle mentioned, you know, hungry, humble, honest, with heart. Uh, and so it's our job in marketing to also help our recruiting teams get that message out and, and not just show people, these are the words, but actually give them great stories. Um, Michelle just put together a super fun campaign. I don't know if it's in the wild yet. It's, it's hitting, probably next week is when it's hitting. It was actually, yeah. it's featuring real Nutanix employees sharing their feelings about being at Nutanix. Um, the initial pass is all still shots, but you can actually see the fun that people are having uh, from all ages, you know, genders. Uh, it's a really diverse, fun set of, of actual employees. So it, it's really, um, you know, in this day and age, you can get a job anywhere, right? But where is that job going to make you feel excited to get out of bed every morning, right? And I firmly believe that's the culture that we have at Nutanix, and we and, gotta yeah, get and it I, out there. I would add to that is um, the the. It's, it's dubbed internally as the you campaign, and it's about you matter. So how you can go get a job anywhere, but are you oftentimes going to go get stuck in a corner, and you're going to sit there and code, or you're going to go sit there and do that, or you're working on one piece of one feature of this. At Nutanix, you actually have opportunities to work on big, bold projects, um, experience, uh, contributing, and, and honestly, mattering as, as an individual, which I think is huge. Mm -hmm. And you're not just a number. Yeah, right. great. Yeah. Well, Julie and Michelle, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE. It's Absolutely. been a really fun time talking to you. Yeah, oh, thanks pleasure. for having us. Thank you very much. I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier. We will have so much more from Nutanix.next coming up in just a little bit. <laughs>